Morning, Father, we worship you, Lord. We bow down before you. We bow down before you, Lord. We bow down before you, Jesus. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We bow down before you, Jesus. Elohim, Father. Elohim, Jesus. Yahweh. Jesus. I'm nothing without you. Yahweh. Yahweh, I want you to say this word and say, Lord, I'm nothing without you. Jesus, I am nothing without you.
our God, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Can you clap our hands to Jesus?
Amen. Can we one more time give praise to the Lord in this place? We want to celebrate the God who is the God alone. Above every God, He is the only one God. He is our Lord of Lords and He's the one we want to worship and praise this morning. Anytime we go. Can you put your hands together as we celebrate the presence of our God? Humans and you are not a God dependent on any modern man. You are not a God in need of anything that's just the way it is. You are not a God created, created by humans and you are not a God dependent on any modern man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Right now. Come on, can you give him praise? He's unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's who you are. You are unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's who you are. That's who you are. You're God alone. That's who you are. You're unchangeable. Unshakable. Unstoppable. That's who you are. Lord, we praise your name, oh God. Lord, we praise your name, oh God. 
You are God alone, God alone You are sitting upon the throne You reign You are God alone Yes, you are God Can you open your heart as we all come together to dwell in worship? The Bible explains and tells us in the book of Revelation that all the angels, all the angels in the heaven, all all the creations, all, all the beings up there were looking at the throne and throwing down their crowns, saying that God, you are holy, holy. The Lamb of God is worthy, worthy to be praised, worthy of the worship, worthy of the throne. But there is something interesting, interesting about this scripture. Jesus didn't die for the angels or for anybody else there. He came in this world. The Bible says, "For the Lord, for God so loved the world that He gave His only one Son to die for us." And whenever you are aware that God is standing in right in front of you, and He is the one who died and rose again, Jesus, the Lamb of God. I think it's our duty to say, to say, holy, holy, holy are you. Worthy are you, Lamb of God. You took away my sins and you gave me a place in your kingdom. So join together as we want to sing this song for the glory of the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reign. Join together with us. Close your eyes and sing together with us. Come on, say. Hallelujah. We give you worship in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reign.
One more time, worthy with the voices. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. 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 Are you Lord God? Are you Lord God? Almighty. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy. to be praised, to be worshipped. You are at the center of our focus. You are at the center of our lives. As you sit on the throne, oh God, we simply want to gaze upon your glory. We simply want to behold to the Lamb of God who died and rose again for our sins. You are the beginning and the end of our life. The beginning and the end of everything. Everything is created by you for you and in you you are the sustainer of everything and without you nothing can exist you are the one who calls things to, to come to pass and no one can question your, your your will no one can question your question your commands no one can question what you do you are at the beginning and the end of everything you see and you control everything alpha and omega we call you god Alpha and Omega, we call you. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Join together, sing along with us, and Omega. And Omega. As you sing the song, you declare that He is the beginning and the end of everything in your life. And we worship Him because He dwells in us. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. Sing it to the Lord. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. And Omega. We worship you. We worship you. You are worthy. up your voice and give him worship give him worship give him worship we give all the glory lord we
are find Omega. You are and Omega and Omega. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. You are worthy. for your grace upon my life. I thank you for your mercy upon my life. Over my family, over my children, over our home, over our jobs, over our business. You alone deserve the glory. something to just give God thanks for this morning has God been good in your life 
Has God done something in your life? Has God not made a way for you when you were stuck in your situation? Has God not opened doors in your life? Has God not protected you from what could have destroyed you? I want you to take this moment and just reflect and say, God, thank you. If it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for you, I would be so lost. I would be so broken. I would be destroyed if it wasn't for you. Oh my God, my King and my Lord. We worship you. Only you deserve the worship from my mouth. Too often I use my mouth to worship other things in my life that has no relevance, has no meaning and has no power. But God, you and you alone only deserve the worship that comes out of my mouth. Oh, my King and my God. Hallowed be your name. The great I am everlasting father the prince of peace and the lord of lords king of glory al shaddai jehovah elohim adonai can we worship we worship you my lord we worship you, oh my Lord, for your grace upon my life, for your hand upon my life. Lord, I thank you. You are so good. You are ever faithful. Even though I don't deserve it, Lord. So many times I have walked away. So many times I have hardened my heart. But you were so faithful in my life. You still reached out to me. You still healed. You still protected. You still delivered. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. My hope, my strength, my peace, my joy. You are my all in all. You're the all sufficient one. You're all I need. You're all I want. Mm -hmm. You're all I ever needed. You're all.
one minute, I just want all of you to lift up your voice and worship God and say, God, I want to know you in my life. I want you to fill me one more time with your presence. Lord, consume me with your love. Consume me with your presence. Let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon me. Let it saturate me. Lord God, transform my mind, transform my life, transform my situation with your glory. Just reach out to God and say, God, all that I want is you. All that I want is you in my life. I want to keep you at the center of my life. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to be the King of my life. Lord, I need you. I need you. I need you. In every breath that I take, I need you. In every decision I need to make, Lord, I need you. I need you, Lord, to direct my thoughts, to direct my ways, to direct my decisions, Father. That I be directed in the will that you have in my life. Lord, open my eyes and let me see the deception that I've allowed to enter into my life. Lord, I need you. Lord, because without you, we are nothing. Lord, you are the purpose for us to live. You are the hope. You're all that I need, Lord. You're all that I need with you in my life. Father, I can face the impossibilities. I can face the storms. I can face every situation. With you in my life, I will always be a majority. With you in my life, Lord, I need you, I need you, I need you, Lord. Lord, I need you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just want to acknowledge your presence. Because without you, Father, we are nothing. Without your presence in this place, Father, we are just wasting our time. But I thank you that you are here right now this morning, speaking into hearts, speaking into lives, restoring hope, restoring peace and joy that has been sucked away from your life. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to bask in your presence. We want to sit and we want to receive everything that you have for us in your presence, Lord. Let us not walk out of this place without receiving what you have for us this morning. I don't want to just come to church and go home the same. I want to come and receive your word into my life. I want, you to, I want to come and receive what you have for me in my life, Father. I come here this morning expecting you to speak into my heart, to speak into my life. Open my eyes that have been blinded to my ways, Father. Let me see. We thank you, Lord. And at this moment, Father, we also want to just thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love and your faithfulness for everything in my life, everything in our families, everything in this church, everything about our future, everything about our past that you have rescued us from, Father, we just want to thank you and we want to give you the glory. And all God's people said, can you give the Lord a praise offering one more time this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you stand to your feet, we're going to just speak the word of God right now into your life. I pray that as you speak the word, let the word that is spoken from your lips manifest in your life by the Spirit of God that will bring all things as you declare it and submit it into His presence. Are you ready this morning? For there's no weapon that's formed against me can prosper. For my righteousness is of the Lord, and whatever I do will prosper. For I am like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. For Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease that will come upon this body, and every disease germ and virus that touches this body 
dies instantly in the name of Jesus. For Christ has redeemed me from poverty. Christ has redeemed me from sickness. Christ has redeemed me from spiritual death. For poverty, he has given me wealth. For sickness, he has given me health. And for death, he has given me eternal life. For the spirit of truth abideth in me, and he teaches me all things, and he guides me into all truths. Therefore I confess that I have perfect knowledge of every situation and every circumstance that I come up against, for I have the wisdom of God. For the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keeps my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus. And the things which are good and pure and perfect and lovely and good report, I think on these things. I let the peace of God rule in my heart and I refuse to worry about anything. I will not let the word of God depart from before my eyes, for it is life to me, for I have found it. It is health and healing to all my flesh, for God is on my side, for God is in me now. Who can be against me? He has given unto me all things that pertains to this life and godliness. Therefore, I'm a partaker of his divine nature. Praise God one more time in this place this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you all happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I can feel like the energy is very, very, very low. I think some of you all had a late night. Or I don't know what it is. But we're going to do something right now. I just want you to walk out, leave your place, and talk to five people and just wish them and say that you are blessed, which means you've got to leave your place, leave your comfort zone, stretch yourself out. Just walk out to somebody, five people, and say that you are blessed. Preferably somebody that you have not shook their hands for the last two weeks. Just reach out to somebody and say you are blessed. And while you're doing that, our worship team is going to immediately lead us into our time of our giving this morning. As the worship team leads, as, the, as we go into our offering, and I pray that God is going to bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Shall we all stand, please? Check, check, check. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. Thank you. That was for me. One, two, three, four. Okay. Um, we're going to take a special offering this morning in the white box. This is not to our missions, but uh, there is a, one of, uh, there's a Congolese brother who has, is very, very serious. Basically, there was a gas leak, and he didn't realize that they didn't close the gas cylinder properly, and it uh, kind of burnt his entire body, and he's, he's in a very, very critical situation. So we want to do what we can to help the... Uh, the expenses in the hospital. He has to be shifted out of a private hospital so that he can go to Victoria because private hospitals are really, really, really expensive. So the community has also reached out to us and saying, can we as a church do something to help this boy? So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to appeal to you this morning as you give your offering today. If you want to feel in your heart to give an offering towards this boy, just put that in the white box in the front and we will, and we will give it as a love gift uh, towards this boy. So, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
standing or sitting or wherever you are. Father, we just want to commit this moment into your hand. We thank you for every seed that has been sown. We thank you, Lord, for every love gift that has been given towards this boy. We pray for his speedy healing. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your hand that has been upon him, that protected his life. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that even in the situation that you will turn it around for his testimony in Jesus' name. We thank you for every tithe and every offering that has been sown in your kingdom. May you continue to multiply it and use it for the expansion of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. Can you turn to someone next to you and say, my God is good. My God is good. I'm not checking my messages. I'm just opening the announcements. If you're wondering. I got one hallelujah. Okay, and I can't find it. Yeah, there we go. Amen. For those, is there anybody here joining us for the first time at Zion? If you can just slip up your hand. Any first timers? Can you just slip up your hand for a moment? You can, you can lift your hand if she's feeling shy. Yeah, you can lift her hand. One of our ushers will meet you and will, will greet you. Can we just welcome her this morning? Amen. For those that are joining us from around the world, we welcome you and we pray that you will be blessed as you hear God's word this morning. So just a few announcements that I just want to uh, go with this morning because our main announcer has, is not here. We'll pray for him wherever his, where is his wife. He's not there. Okay. Um, as we've been announcing, on the 8th of September <coughs> is, uh, is the meeting with, the, with the Rabbi Zacharias, which is going to be at the Christ University. We have about 89 to 90 people that have already registered, amen, so uh, we have very, very, very limited passes, so those of you that have not yet registered, who would like to just invite a friend, pick up a pass, because without a pass, uh, you will not be allowed into the vicinity, it's free, but you got to register, so meet Sister Janet uh, at the end of the service and pick up your pass from her, uh, where's the next one, yes, on the 9th of September, but, uh, we are going to be having a special service. It's going to be a combined service. We're going to be having a special speaker that's going to be with us. And we're going to start at 10.30. So we won't have two services. We'll only have one service on that day. We're going to start at 10.30 a.m. I wrote p.m. here for some reason. 10.30 a.m. Amen. So please make whatever adjustments you need to make on your calendar, on your schedules. Uh, we will constantly remind you uh, through whichever means that of communication that we have. If you're on our... Facebook page or if you're on a WhatsApp messages, you will get a message as a reminder. But if not, please remind yourself that is the 9th of September. Am I right? 9th? Of yes. Thank you very much. I was just paying, want you to know if you're paying attention, which is good. Praise God for that. Amen. It's good to bring your mind when you come to church as well. Amen. Yes, that's right. So 10th is Sunday, 9th is Saturday. So, okay. Praise God. You got the announcement, right? Okay. Um, we have started, or we're going to be starting an English initiative uh, for those that are coming from uh, the other nations who uh, English is not your primary language and you want to learn to just be free in communication and to learn the language a little better. Uh, it's going to be a free uh, course, but we need you to register. We already have quite a few that have already registered. We'll be starting in the month of September. So we need you to register quickly. We also have in this church a lot of English teachers. Um, so all of them have come forward and said we would like to contribute uh, towards this initiative. So there's going to be trained professionals who are going to be helping you, uh, which you would pay maybe 10, 15,000 outside. You, you're going, we're going to just do it as an act of love and, maybe, and that's going to help you and bless you. But you please register so that we can plan the classes accordingly. We can plan the batches accordingly as well. Is that okay? I know most of you know uh, the English, but those, if, if you are not, then praise God. Okay, so every Tuesday we've been having a prayer. I think this was given out last week. I don't know if we have any more. Um, every Tuesday we have a prayer, but this particular Tuesday, which is coming up, we're going to have a special prayer. It's going to be a time of prayer and worship and the word. Uh, we advertised at 7.30, but we're actually pre it to 6.30. So 6.30 this Tuesday evening is going to be an amazing time. I want you to invite somebody with you. 
Or if you've been praying for something for a long time and you just say, God, I want you to touch me. I need a breakthrough or I need a healing. If you know somebody that needs a healing or a breakthrough or an answer, bring them and come. So we're going to start at 6.30 p.m. this Tuesday. And it's going to be a time of just worship and prayer and the word of God. And I believe that we're going to see breakthroughs and healings and miracles for his glory. Amen. So we've been preparing for this for a long time. And so I think this is going to be every last Tuesday of the month. We're going to have an open event. We're going to invite friends and family from outside to come in and to receive a touch from God. Amen? So that's this Tuesday, 6.30. And I'm sure that all of you are going to be there. Can I get an amen for that? That's like, yeah, we'll see. Amen? So that's this Tuesday. Please don't forget. Please invite a friend. And I believe you will see great things happening. Uh, As I've mentioned before, uh, I am leaving on the 31st of this month. That's Thursday. I'm probably gone for about six weeks. So I covet your prayers. I need your prayers and any financial support if you feel in your heart to be a part of the missionary trip to Africa. I'll be about four four weeks in uh, Ivory Coast and about two weeks in Nigeria. But please pray for me because the Ivory Coast meeting is uh, already looks like an entire month of continuous meeting. So I need your prayer. I need your covering. And I need you to constantly pray for me. So those of you who feel in your heart to say, Pastor, I want to be an intercessor for you during this time, then please do come and meet me. And because we want, I, I, we want to form a group so that you know which was the schedule, when we're going to be speaking, what we're going to be doing, so that you can keep me in prayer. Is that okay? Amen. So those are the announcements for this week. Are you ready for the Word of God this morning? I know there's quite a few announcements, but I'm sure you'll remember all of them. Yes? Just nudge your neighbor and say, did you hear, did you listen to him? Did you listen to him? While you're doing that, can you just turn to your, in your Bibles to the book of 2 Kings chapter 8 verses 3. I just feel everybody is so quiet today. Just shake up somebody and say, get alive. Get alive, get alive. Pastor needs your support this morning, get alive. 2 Kings and chapter 8 verses 3 and while you're there, we're just going to pray, Father. We just thank you right now for your word that you will speak into our life, Father. We just thank you that you will do whatever you need to do. Let your word go forth and not return void. And we thank you for what you're about to do in our lives. Through your word, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One more announcement I just need to remember. Uh, 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 The meetings uh, on the 9th of September, they're looking for volunteers. There's going to be a large crowd, so they need volunteers. If you're free on that day and if you just like to volunteer your time, Please meet Brother David at the back, um, and he will tell you what is the requirement, and, and, and he'll give you all the other information. Amen? Okay, are you there? 2 Kings and chapter 8, verses 3. And it came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines, and she went to make an appeal to the king for a house and for her land. I'm going to fast forward to verses 5. Verse 6, and when the king asked the woman, she told him, so the king appointed a certain officer for her, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the proceeds of the field from the day that she left the land until now. When you go back home, please read the other verses because of lack of time. I just went to the third and the sixth, but there is a context to what's happening here, so please go back and read it. I like to title this message, Get It Back. If you're making notes... Get it back. And I want to talk to you about a principle this morning. We don't talk about this principle too often. But um, I just want to lay this principle to, with you. And I know that this principle applied in your life will work. Amen? Here's the principle. If you're going to get back what you've lost, then you need to go back to what you left. If you're going to get back what you lost, you need to go back to what you left. And I'm going to just dwell on that principle for the next however long that you allow me to speak. Amen? Hallelujah. If you walk away from the standards of the word, you're walking away from the power of his promises. I'll say that again. If you walk away from the standards of the word, then you walk away from the power of his promises. The problem that we have is that we don't want to live by the standards 
of God's word and God's principle, but we still expect the principle to work in our lives. Does that make sense? And that's the problem with the church who's a carnal church. The reason for frustration is because you are trying to get a principle to work, but you don't want your lifestyle to reflect the principles of God. When you're walking in contrary to the principles of His Word, then you cannot put a demand on the power of His blessing. Does that make sense? Because God is a just God. We all know that. He's a just God. You cannot expect God to bless you and prosper you in your sin. So while, you can, while we live contrary to the principles and the word of God, and we still expect the blessings of the word to operate just because we come to church, just because we sing some songs, just because sometimes we read the Bible in the mornings. So we said, I'm doing all these things, so I expect then this has to work in my life. Amen? And the principle is that when you walk away from it, you will never be able to receive the power that it was meant for. So when you look at what happened in this lady's life, she left her land, her positions and everything because there was a famine. She was uh, the, the prophet of God told her to leave, go to another country. And now she's come back. She has lost her house. She has lost her land. She has lost everything. Amen? And now she's coming back and now she's making a demand on what she has lost. So, if, so the principle that we want to talk about today and spend a little time is this. If you're going to get back what you lost, then you need to go back from where you left. If you want to get the word of God to constantly operate in your life, you need to go back to the point and to the place of your life where it was operating in your life. Amen? When we're new Christians and when we come to the knowledge of God, oh, we're so much on fire. We read the word of God. We try to live by the standards of God. We know we are in love with, with, with God and we want to follow him in his ways. And then we see the blessings of God operate. But as time goes, you know, we get complacent, we get lazy, and we just expect what we had before to constantly operate in our life. And then we do, when we look back in our lives, we don't understand what used to work before. Why is it not working today? And if you have something in your life that's not working, and it was working some time ago, you need to go back to the point of where you had it working before. You've got to reflect into your life and say, what is going on in my life that is preventing God to do what He wants to do in my life? Are you with me? Amen? The church today, or the carnal Christians that we have today in church, we want to walk in the freedom of, of God, we want to walk in the power of God, we want to walk in the blessing of God, but we really have no desire on the things of God. Our heart is really not focused on what does God want in my life? What does God want to do through me for my family or for my nation or for wherever God will put you or to my company? We're really not concerned about what does God want. What we are concerned about is what do I want? What do I want? Amen? And so although we have that, 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 that attitude of what do I want, but we still want to expect that we walk in the power of the blood of Jesus, we walk under the name of the power of, in the name of Jesus, and we want all of these things to constantly work, but when we have no desire to really see what does God want to do for me and through me. Are you with me? A lot of Christians, you know, when times are tough, they're very sincere, and they want to serve, and they want to, they, want to, they want to be a part of it. They want to be a part of the church. They want to do things, you know, because they, 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 they know that God is going to do something, especially when we're young. But then when God blesses, we've got no time for the one who blessed us. Does that make sense? And that is the, the deception of success. The success, you know, what I, I said this before, and I hope I can remember what I said. The greatest enemy to your destiny is your last success. Because success will want to keep you where you are. But your destiny will want to urge you to keep moving forward. But when I'm comfortable in where I am, I'm happy, things are going well in my life, I don't have the need to push. But when things are not going well in our life, we 
push with everything that we have. Am I right, somebody? We pray earnestly. We get into God's word and say, okay, God, what is your promise? What are you saying? We start listening to messages. We start listening to worship songs. We start reading our Bible more. We start becoming sincere more. But once we see success released in our life, that's when now we don't have time for the one that made us successful. Amen? What do we talk, when we talk about potential, what is potential? What you have in you which you still not realized to the fullest. That's what potential is. So when you have achieved a level, it's no longer your potential, which means there's much more than in you. Are you with me? So when you're successful, you've reached a level, but there's so much more that God wants to do in your life, but you can get so comfortable in your success, in your position, you can become complacent, and you can miss out on even greater things God wants to do in you, for you, and through you. And the reason why so much of the church is weak is because we, are, we like God to do things for us. We like, to do, we like God to do things in us, but we really don't want to ne- take the next stage and say, okay, now God, do it through us. That is the real power of the Christian, where you can be an instrument where God can flow into this broken world. Amen? Where you can, you who are the recipient of unconditional love from God can be the channel of unconditional love to the world. Because the love that the world knows is, is I will love you as long as, as long as you're good to me, or as long as you know, you're faithful, or as long as things are okay between us. But once that equation changes, then my love for you changes. Am I right? If God had that same condition in our life, many of us, if not all of us, wouldn't be here. Because we all know that we all have fallen short of God's standard. But because of his unconditional love, he keeps reaching out to us and say, I'm picking you up again because there's so much more I want to do to you. There's so much more I want to do in your life. There's so much more that I can do through your life. Hallelujah. But when we, we, are, but when we become so stuck, especially you know, in church, and I'm speaking to the church, we become so stuck in our ways that we we, we pray earnestly for God to touch our lives, to God to do things in our life, but we are really so disinterested for God to do things through our life. And that's where the power of the Christian really lies, on the third, third stage. Amen? When God works in our lives, He first has to fix you before He can work through you. We're all aware of that. Amen? Because if you are broken, you can't give somebody something that you don't have. If you don't have peace, you can't talk to them about the peace that is Jesus. Are you with me? Amen? So God first will fix you before he can use you to, to be an instrument. But we are so happy with the first stage. Okay, God fix me. God bless me. God prosper me. God heal me. God do this. God do that. And he does that. He said, okay, now let's go to the next stage. He said, God, I'm too busy. I got too many appointments. I got too much of work to do. I'm busy 9 to, nine to 9, and even in the midnights, I'm very busy. God, I have no time. And that's why the church is stopping where it actually should be the place where it starts. Are you very quiet this morning? Are you okay? Just shake someone and say, are you okay? That wasn't my message, but it's going there. Amen. Because you have to understand that every single person is unique in what God wants them to do in the kingdom. We are all the church. Combined, we are the collective church. But individually, you are the church as well. When the individual church comes collectively, we become the corporate church. Amen? And the corporate church, God uses as a vessel to influence the land. He uses the individual church to influence his surroundings. But he uses the corporate church to influence the land. Are you with me? Amen? I was at a prayer meeting uh, this is church now that has gone to the 54th or 55th day of their prayer, continuous prayer. I'm at this prayer meeting and God spoke to me and he, and he showed me this. And I shared it with a few people, but I want to share that with you today. He said that the power of the nation lies in the power of the church. I hope I'm saying this right. The power of the nation lies in the power of the church. But the power of the church lies in the power of its prayer. Are you with me? All the countries that have prospered, the reason for their prosperity is because the gospel spread. 
Amen? And they prospered and they were doing really well. And then they said, you know, we don't need God anymore. The reason why India is climbing is because the gospel is spreading. Amen? And we're seeing that happen in our nation. The nation depends upon the church, even though they don't realize it. They depend upon the church. Because the church is the power that, that moves the nation forward. Are you with me? Amen? God will touch an individual for him to influence the surrounding. But he uses churches to influence nations. Amen? He will use this church to influence communities. And, the, and all the churches together to influence cities and to influence uh, districts and to influence countries. Amen? But when we are so absorbed in ourselves, then, you know, and we claim, we say, we say the word, seek ye first the kingdom. Oh, it's all about the kingdom. Oh, God, use me in your kingdom. And the kingdom is all about what? Spreading the gospel of God upon this nation, upon, upon this land. But if the church stops being the church, outside the church, it no longer remains the church. I said that before, I'll say it again, and I think it's really powerful. If the church stops being the church outside the church, it no longer remains the church. It just becomes a club. Amen? We all come here, have a good time. You know, when you go to a club, oh, we all dance, sing, yeah, yeah, all happy, and go back, and that's it. Hallelujah. The church has to get equipped to equip and to empower our nation. And India needs it. India needs your prayer. India needs you on your... You know, the, uh, the society that we have is so moral, morally disturbed. If you look at rape, when rape happens in the country and we see the, the, the graphic rape that happened, what do people do? They light a candle, peace march. You, you know that, right? But when the rapists get convicts, what do they do? They burn a city. Did you see what happened in the news recently? Where is morality? You're fighting for the person who has abused somebody. And the church is quiet. David and me were having a discussion about this some time ago. And, and somebody asked him, what is your church doing about the situation that you see in your country? When you see rapes happening, when you see injustice happening to children, what is the church doing? A very simple answer, nothing. Once in a way, we'll come together and say, okay, let's pray. August 15th, we had a prayer for the nation. I'm not going to ask you, but you know you were not there. Amen. Oh, Lord, help me this morning. Pray for me this morning. Praise, pray for me this morning. Hallelujah. If the church stops being the church, then what we are doing, we're just wasting time. We're just having a good time. We tick on our mark. Oh, I went to church. Wonderful. I put an offering. Wonderful. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But God is saying, I'm looking out for more. You know, when, when David wanted a, a drink of water, it talks about this in the Old Testament. He says, oh, if I could just have a drink of water from the well. And what happened? Three people, three of his mighty men, went down and got that water from the enemy camp. He didn't say, okay, you three are my most mighty men. I want you to go down and get me some water. He said, I just want a water. What God says is, I want you to pray for the land. I'm looking for a people that will intercede for the land. And then the people respond and say, God, it is me. I will do it. But most of us are waiting for God to say, okay, you. I want you to do it. Okay, God, then I'll do it. But God works in a different way. And that's why he calls them the three mightiest men. He already knew their skills and their ability and their talents. He didn't say that you three go down because you can take them out, get me a glass of water. He just said, oh, if I could just drink a glass of water from that well. And they three just left everything. They went down into the enemy camp. And God is challenging and asking you, are you willing to, to, to just leave your comfort and say, God, I, I'm available. God, I want to get on my knees. You don't have to call me, Lord. I'm on my knees saying, God, use me whenever you want to use me. I'm ready. You, you just have to say, I need this and I'm ready. The church has been announcing for a long time. You know, for those that are, you are talented, come and join us. We need this help. We need that help. You know that you didn't volunteer. Forget about who volunteered. You know you didn't. Because there's some other people, they will do it. There's so many other people, they will do it. I don't have the time. I'm so tired. I'm already engaged Monday to Saturday. You know, why should I even take the time out on a Sunday morning to do that? Somebody else will do it. This morning, we had no water or glasses for anybody. Nobody even realized. 
until I had to ask somebody, say, please go and get some water and he got, glasses and he got it. But nobody else will look around and say, what does the church need? How can I help my church be a church? How can I reach out to people? How many of us, how many of you here has come here maybe in the last one or two months? First time, one or two months, three months. Just lift up your hand slowly. You can, a little higher, please, a little higher. Okay, let me extend it. Four months, four months. Four months you've come, four months, first time you've been to the church? Okay. In all the hands raised, how many of you have met them? Are you, are you following what I'm saying? I know this is not a lift me up, bless me message, but I think you, we are missing the point. When you miss the point, then what is the use of us moving on? We can talk about how God wants to prosper you, how God wants to lift you, how God wants to heal you, and he'll do this and he'll do that. But we're missing the point of it all. Like I spoke to you about miracles, in the, I think about some time ago. When you see when God works a miracle, it's the face of your life. There's certain miracles for your sustenance. And there's certain miracles for your empowerment and for, your, and for you to move up to, to take control of whatever you need to take control. But we all like the sustenance. God, give me a job. God, heal me. God, do this for my family. God, do that for my family. And we don't want to grow into the next stage. Are you with me? This is not even my message. I don't know why I'm preaching, but maybe God wants you to hear this. You got to leave you and your gang and your circle and your anything like, oh my God, maybe if I walk up to them, they won't like me or whatever. If you cannot be a church in the church, then what are we doing outside? Nothing. Are you with me? We, get, we have to get a passion for people. Because God's passion is people. Amen? And if we don't have a passion for people, then, then we're just missing the point completely. The reason why we come together and pray is, is not just so God do something in my life, but God do something through my life. I want to be a channel of your, of, your, of your presence. I want to be a channel of your peace. I want to be a channel of your joy and your love. I want, to, I want to reach out to people who need it. Because the world is searching for hope. The world is searching for security. The world is searching for meaning. The world is searching for position. What do every people run after? Everybody runs after, you know, finding identity. What is my purpose? What is the meaning of life? Why am I even here? What is the reason for me to live? That's what the world is searching for. And the only place that they will find it is at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Because that's where we truly understand who God is and who we are. And when you understand who you are and who God is and, who, and how you relate to God, then your purpose of why you live becomes more clearer. Amen. So while the world is running helter and skelter searching for, for meaning in life, the church who's supposed to have the meaning in life is as equally lost. Yes? Because we are running just like everybody else. We're running after position. We're running after this. We're running after that. Only if I have this. How does the world operate? It amplifies what you don't have to make you run after it. It never lets you focus on what you have. It always exaggerates what you don't have. And because you don't have this, you are not complete. You are not, you're not fulfilled yet. You understand what I'm saying? Amen? So what do we do? We run after what we think we don't have or what we have a lack of. And that's what materialism is all about. It amplifies what you don't have and we lose focus of what we have. Because when we are, when we are content and understand what we have, we have joy. Amen? Why do most people leave their families and run after everything else? Because they feel that everything else will bring them fulfillment and the thing that was entrusted to them they have, they have forsaken. And they find nothing there, and they'll find nothing here. And what are they left with? Nothing. Are you with me? But, but God shows us a different perspective. He says, seek ye first the kingdom. Don't run after this. You run after the kingdom. I know how to add on to you. I know how to heal your family. I know how to promote you. I know how to lift you up. Amen. But when you walk away from my word, it makes it very difficult for me to promote you in your sin. Because me promoting you in your sin is me justifying your action. 
and me saying I'm okay with it, what you're doing. Are you, are you with me? Amen? And then everybody else around us will say, he's a Christian, she's a Christian, and they're doing this, and God is still blessing them, so it's okay for us to do that as well. And we keep telling our leaders in the church, in fact, everybody, you need to understand this, your life is a testimony. Amen? Your life is the, the standard of God's word that everybody else will read for them to understand who you are. The Bible says, all, stay away from all perceptions of sin. Which means what? Even if somebody's seeing it as a sin, if you're indulging it, then you're causing them to stumble. Amen? And especially young people. We try to say this as often as we can. People are watching you. So when you think you're going late night to a sister or brother's house to pray with them, everybody else outside that house will know that there's something else in your agenda. No amen this morning. Yes. And all the unbelievers who don't know God, who don't know what is the standard of morality that God sets, will look at your life and say, okay, he's a Christian. So yeah, Christians do this. They drink, they smoke, they gamble, they, they womanize. Yeah, Christian, it's okay. That's what Christians do. And that's the picture that the Christians have created in the world. That it, this is the lifestyle. So when you, when you talk about Christianity, they, talk, they think about the loose lifestyle. They don't understand that the Christian, the Christian lifestyle is true morality according to God's standard. Amen? Oh my Lord. Are you okay this morning? Amen. There's an example that, that God... Oh, Jesus, I have to close. There's an example that God showed me. We've been having these really bad rains. Amen? You have a hum, an umbrella. 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 I have to be very careful about my words because after that, I'd, some people come and give me English classes. It's not hum, it's um. So I have to, you know. So an umbrella. If you choose to walk outside the covering of the umbrella, what will happen? You will get? You will get wet. And most often, people who get wet get sick. This is how the church reacts. I don't want to walk under the umbrella, the covering, the protection of God. Amen. I prefer to walk in the rain and now I will use this promise to claim my healing. Does that make sense to you? By his stripes I am healed. His word says that. But what is the point? I've given you an umbrella so you don't land up in that position. And then we really don't understand why is the promise not working? Because you have not, you walked away from the umbrella. Are you with me? Amen. Many of us, we walk away from, from really seeking God. We, walk away, we, lost, we lose joy. We lose our hope because, you know, we don't have time to pray anymore. You know, if you, if, if, you lose, if you lose the word, if you walk away from the word, then you lose your mind. Because your mind is always being influenced. And if it's not being influenced by the word, it's being influenced by the world. Amen. So when you don't have the influence of the word, you will be under the influence of the world. And your standards and your lifestyle and your decisions and everything will, be, will, will come out of what you've been influenced under. Amen? So when you're influenced by the word of God, your decisions are based on what influences you. When you're influenced by the world, your decision will be based on what influences you. And every decision that you make has an outcome, has an impact. And you've got to live with the consequence of it. Hallelujah. So when you walk away from something, you will lose. And the only way for you to get it back is to return from where it was. Amen? We return back to the feet of Christ. Return back to your first love. When, when, when in Revelation chapter 2, it talks about the church, the first church. It says that, you know, I have no issues with you, but the only issue I have with you is that you've lost your first love. You've lost your first love. You don't love me anymore like how you love me. Because everything that we do is an outcome of our love for God. Amen? We don't do it to deserve God's love. We do it as an outflow of God's love. Are you with me? You give not because you can earn God's blessing. You give because, you have, because of God's blessing already on you and you're being a channel. 
Amen. You forgive because you have received forgiveness. You don't forgive to receive forgiveness. Are you okay with it? Amen. Hallelujah. So when, so when I, I was going somewhere else. And then he talks to the last church in, in Revelation chapter 4. And he says that, you know, we talk about the lukewarm church. He said, I will spit you out. You're neither hot nor cold. What, what he talks about in the Lacedaemonian church is the hot, hot springs were meant for refreshing, for tired travelers to have a bath to cleanse yourself. The cold springs were meant for, you know, cold water when you're tired to refresh you. He's saying your lifestyle is not helping anybody clean themselves nor is it bringing refreshment to anybody else. Basically, you are no use in the kingdom. Are you with me? And most of the church, you know, when I look at it, what is the greatest opposition in the church? It is not demonic powers. It is not oppression and all of that big, big things that we talk about. It is this gentle spirit of lukewarmness, of complacency. Complacency kills the fire. And when you are not on fire for God, then you are not effective for God. Are you with me? It's the gentle spirit of complacency. Be happy where you are. You're blessed, be happy. Amen? We've been having this Tuesday prayers, and I know it's a very, if you're here for the first time, if you're new, please forgive me. We've been having these prayers for some time, you know, and it's been raining quite often. Most of the people, the reason why we don't come for prayer, it's raining. And those people who have that, that reason are the ones who have the means and the ability to be there for it, irrespective of the weather. But those that somehow make it are the ones that will say, God, I don't have a car, I don't have a bike, I don't have money to, to take a taxi, but God, I want to be there and I'm going to do everything in my ability to be there. God makes a way for them. They somehow make it because their heart and their desire is, God, I want to serve you. But those of us who have it all, we are complacent because as long as I'm okay, everything is okay. And the reason why I'm urging you is, church, if we don't wake up, if we don't wake up, then it will sometimes be too late for us to wake up. If you look at what is happening around the climate of our country, the church has to wake up and pray and intercede and go out and reach out to people and love people and help people. Amen. But if you're just stuck in our own comfort, you will stop being the vessel that God has ordained you to be. A vessel of His power, a vessel of His glory, a vessel of His peace, a vessel of His love. Amen? This lady comes back home and talks to the king. And the king here now re re returns everything that was this lady's. And the Bible said, he said, now, all the years that she was not here, the seven years, the prophet from that land... Give it back to her. God is a restorer. This is a principle I want you to understand. When you have lost something, come back to the king. Get back to the king. Because he is the only one that has the power and the authority to not only redeem you, but to lift you up and to replace everything that was stolen and lost in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will not find that answer in the world. You will only find it in the power of the one that has the ability to give it. Which is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's the second principle I want to leave with you. When you, need, when you return, return back to the King. Amen. Religion has a way of how you repent. And God has a way on how you repent. Most of the time, Mishay, can I use you for a moment? Religion will, will, will talk to you about repentance. Now he's coming back. Come, come slowly, bro. I need to finish my sentence. He's coming back to the king. And religion says, you're coming back to the king. Kneel down. Lie straight, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lie straight. Can you roll over? Okay, now get up again. You, see, he's young and he's like, one sit up and he'll... <laughs> kneel down again. Okay, stand up again. Okay, we'll get back to you. That's how religion will teach you about repentance. You got to earn your repentance. Amen? You got to do this, you got to do that, you got to fall on your knees, you got to really, really, really fall on your knees, and only then God will see in his calendar if he's got time for you, and then he might reach out to you. But until then, you keep falling on your knees. 
But when God looks at repentance, can you go back down again? Bro, it's only four steps. He's like, like, my God. But when God looks at repentance, he sees you coming. And the first thing that he does is even before you can take your next step, he's already there to hold you. And he says, come, my son. Come, my son. I'm taking you back to where you belong. That is how God looks at repentance when you come back on your knees. When you come back to the king and say, God, I want to come back to you. Before you can even make the next step, he's right there for you. And we connect it back to the prodigal son. When we look at the example of the prodigal son, when he returned home, before he could even come home, it's not like the father is waiting and say, okay, let him come to the gate, like a lot of fathers would do. Let him come to the gate, let him say, I'm sorry, five times. And then, yeah, it takes me some time to get over it. But the prodigal son, what do we, what do we learn from all of it? These stories that we, we talk about, we tell our kids, but sometimes we don't have the revelation of it. What did, what did he do? As soon as he saw his son, he ran to him, and he hugged him, and he kissed him, and, and he empowered him. Amen? Many of us, I don't know what is the state of your life right now. Maybe you have got caught up in your own situation. You say, okay, God, you know, I can't believe I've gone this way, but since I've gone this way, let me just keep going. But he's calling out to you and he's saying, come back. Come back to the king. Because only the king has the power to restore. Turn to someone next to you and say, get back. Maybe it's peace in your life or in your home. Maybe it's joy. Maybe this, it's something that is so personal to you and, you. and you've been striving and you've been running after that and say, God, you know, when am I going to get this? When am I going to get this? And all God is saying to you, my son, my daughter, come back. When you come back, I have the power to restore and to bring back everything that you thought you lost. Maybe you thought you lost your family. Maybe you thought you said, okay, maybe it's too long. My relationship is too strained. I'm, I, I don't think my wife will ever love me again. I don't think my, my husband will ever love me again. I don't think my children will ever love me again. It's too many years. God, they're too old now. Oh, I lost this business. I've lost this land. I've lost this. Whatever you've lost, God has the power to redeem it in your life. But if you can only come back to the king with a heart, to say, God, I really need you. A lot of us will go to God for what we want. Like I think uh, Pastor Thomas said last week, a lot of us are pr- in our prayer, we have a God of what we want and a God that who is, and their two are not the same. Amen? In the book of Revelations, in one of the churches, he says this, because you've been like this, I'm going to take the candle away from you. I'm going to take the candle away from you until, unless you repent. What does that mean? The candle symbolizes light. It was the source of light in the, in, in the temple, in the inner court. The candle showed the people where the bread was, where the incense was, where everything was. But if the light is not there, if, there's, if the light is not there, then you can't see. When you can't see, you don't know where you're going. You don't know what you're doing. You'll be lost. Amen? The light of God, he says that my word is a light unto your feet and a lamp unto your path. But if I take the light out, you won't know where you're going. You won't know what you're doing. And you'll be lost. Why? Because you're so absorbed in you. Because if I can't use you to be a blessing, why do I need to bless you? The purpose of you being a blessing is so you can bless You can give to the hurting world. You can share with the lost world and the depraved world. But if you can't be the channel, then why would I want to get something to you if I can't get it through you? Amen? We need to challenge ourselves as a church and say, can we start becoming the church again? Let's not play church. Let's become the church. Hallelujah. I believe that's everybody's cry, everybody's need in their heart. It's like, I don't want to come to church for the sake of coming to church. I want to come to church so that I, I can become more of who God wants me to be, so that I, my mind is transformed by His Word, so my eyes are enlightened to His Word, so that I know what is the hope of my calling, what is the riches of His glory for the inheritance of the saints. We know the Scripture, but can we become that Scripture? Can we become the church that he's looking for in the last days? The church that will get on the knees. He said, if my people will humble themselves and pray and turn from their ways, I will hear from heaven and I will heal the land. Is that not our cry? God, would you not heal our land? 
Would you not touch our nation? Is that not our cry? If you are not crying for your nation, then why are you, why will God use you to touch the nation? I'm going to end with, a, with an example, my own personal example. You know, when I'm really tired at home, I like to just sit back on my bed. I have a very comfortable bed. I put the pillows, you know, my tie, very, very comfortable bed. You know, relax. And then my wife would ask me, are you hungry? I'll use some nice word because she's a very nice person. Honey, are you hungry? Um, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm very hungry. Then she'll bring me some food sometimes on my bed, you know. I'm so comfortable. I'm hungry, but I'm not... I'm not desperate to get out of my bed to get the food. Are you with me? And most of the church is that, Lord, will you not bring revival in this church? Will you not bring revival in this land? Would you not do this? Would you not do that? Would you not change this? Would you not do that? I'm willing to cry out as long as you don't ask me to get out of my bed and go take your own food. In the kingdom, I said this before and I hope I remember this. In the kingdom, everything that you need, God will provide. But the things that you want, you've got to go after. The kingdom of God suffereth violence, but the violence taken by force. It's not by force, but it's like getting on your knees and interceding and praying and crying out. Amen? It's not just putting your legs up on the bed and say, God, bring revival, bring revival, bring the revival. It's to get on your knees passionately and cry out for your nation. Amen. Can we as the church become the church? Can you as the church become once again the church? The temple of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you are the temple of God. You are the church individually. And we together are the corporate church. If the corporate church comes together and prays this power that is released. And that is what our prayer and our cry has been. Even on this Tuesday meetings that we have, that's been our cry. God, make us the powerhouse of prayer. We like to be the powerhouse of miracles, but we don't want to be called the powerhouse of prayer because prayer takes effort. Prayer takes dedication. Prayer, prayer takes sacrifice. Miracles is all of God. Are you with me? We love the miracles, but we don't want to get on our knees and say, God, I'm praying for that miracles to be released in the place. There's another thing that God showed me in this prayer when I was there. He says that, he showed me this and it was so powerful. He says that prayer makes the path for the power of God to manifest. Prayer creates the path for the power of God to manifest. Are you with me? Amen? So we don't pray because it's a religious thing to do. We pray because it's the right thing to do. God has called you to pray, to intercede for your life, for your family, for your nation, for your neighborhood, for your friends, for your family. How many people are you influencing by your life? How many co-workers have you told about Jesus? Have you shared peace? You know that every single person in this world is looking for answer, peace, hope, joy. Every single person. And whoever gives them a glimpse of it, they will run after it. When you who have the secret of, the, of what is peace, not just the absence of trouble, but the presence of a person, you having the greatest treasure, hide it under the bush so that nobody knows that you have it. Can you become a church once again? Can we become the church once again? That is God's cry. And he's been placing this on my heart. He's saying that I want you to get back to your first love. I want you to get back and cry and intercede for your nation because Bangalore needs us. India needs us. But what are you doing about it? I want you to stand to your feet and I just feel like I want to pray with you right now. And I I believe God... When he speaks to you, he doesn't beat you up. He says that this is your calling. This is what I called you for. This is why I I separated you. This is why I chose you. This is why I died for you. So that you can be an instrument of my peace and a channel of my voice. I know God is speaking to a lot of people today and He's saying that, you know, I want you to become who you are. Stop pretending to be something that you are not. Become who you are. Become a child, a son and a daughter of God. 
come back to your first love come back to me come back to the king and let me restore everything that you thought that was stolen away from you that you have forsaken because the situations were difficult the times were difficult or whatever the scenario or the excuse that you have in your life is saying just leave that aside come to come back to the king and he will restore if an earthly king can restore to this lady everything she has lost and more what about your heavenly father who is the king of kings and the lord of lords would he not restore back into you everything that has been taken away all the joy that has been sucked out the peace the hope that has been broken your heart the tears that you have cried that's why his word says in the song that we sang he has turned my mourning into dancing the sorrow will endure for the night but joy shall come in the morning if you stray away from the word of god the standards of god then you cannot claim a blessing that we should operate under that umbrella come back we talk about the grace and the mercy of god because he's so merciful he will still bless me because his grace is sufficient he will still bless me but i believe his grace and his mercy will embrace you to bring you back to under that umbrella once again so that everything that the umbrella was supposed to do for you does for you it's supposed to protect you it's supposed to keep you and that's what his word is to protect you in times of situations to keep you anchored to keep you to keep you from what is affecting everybody else he's saying can you come back to me come back to me come back to me in the book of joel it talks about don't rent your garments rent your heart it's not about the external show of repentance it's the internal heart of repentance that god and the bible says god sees the heart do not be deceived god sees your heart if you are here this morning and you say god i feel i have walked away too far i feel i've got so absorbed in my life that i have left my first love i have left that place that i used to receive when you leave the place of prayer you will lose the the sound of his voice because in the time of prayer he speaks and when god speaks it is and shall be he will call all those things that are not as though it is and it shall be but that happens in the place of prayer where god speaks into your life but if you walk away from his from from the footstool of god away from his presence you will lose the sound of his voice he says would you not come back if you have lost the joy then you have forgotten your praise if you are losing your mind is because you have lost the word would you not come back i have plans for you says the lord great plans to bless you i have so many things that i want to do in your life and through your life for your family for everything around you would you not come back he is such a gentle spirit that he stretches out his hand and says please take my hand i will not come and i will not force you against your will i stretch out i will knock he that opens the door i will come in and he's knocking at your heart right now and he says i want to make all things new in your life i want to make all things new once again in your life would you not open the door of your heart for me with every eye closed if that is your prayer Can you just slip up your hand for a moment? I just want to pray for you. Every eye closed. If that is your prayer, I want to just pray for you. Father, I thank you right now. You have seen all those hands. Lord, it is in the humility of our heart that we come before your presence right now this morning. And say, Father, forgive us. We have strayed so far away from you that we have lost sight of the things that are most important. 
Lord, I thank you that it was your blood that saved me, that pulled me out of my situation, that pulled me out of my mess. But I have walked so far away, God, I have lost sight of your grace. So this morning, Father, I want to come before you. I want to bow before your presence and say, Oh, King of kings and Lord of lords, take the place, take your place in my life. Become the center of my heart. Become the center of my life. Become the center of my family. May you be, Lord, the sovereign God of my life. I want to bring you back as the head of my life. God, I rend my heart before you. And I cry out to you, God. Fill me one more time. I want to hear your voice one more time. I want to feel your presence in my life one more time, Lord. My heart, my heart belongs to you. My heart belongs to you. Lord, I need you. Forgive us, Lord, for our actions, for our selfish thoughts and desires. We run after things which are meaningless and we've forgotten the one that is our purpose for living, which is you. So this morning, I want to surrender. I want to surrender. I want to surrender. I surrender my thoughts. I surrender my desires. I surrender my future. I surrender my life. I surrender my family. Everything that I am and everything that I have, I surrender it at your feet, O King of kings and Lord of lords. So many of you have lost so much in your life that you think it's impossible for you to ever come back to who you were. But God is saying, I am a God of restoration. You might have lost so much, but I can redeem even more what you have lost. Come back to my feet. And let me love you. Let me speak into you. Let me restore you. Let me heal you. Surrender it. Surrender all to you. Don't let it just be a word, but let it be a cry from your heart. And I, I surrender all to you.
Father, I just thank you right now. As the Spirit of God is moving right now, He is speaking into hearts. And He's saying, come back, come back, come back, come back. I love you so much. As you've taken the first step, He is already right there with you, holding your hand and embracing you with His love. And He's saying, I love you so much. I love you so much. Let me work in your life. Let me work through your life. Let me open your eyes and show you the things that have deceived you and have taken you away. And he's reaching out to you right now. Father, I just thank you for a restoration that has been released in this place. I thank you for those who cry and say, God, restore me. Restore my life once again. Restore the peace and the joy that I used to have, God. And I walked away, Lord. I, right now, I thank you that you're restoring everything that was taken out of them. Everything that was robbed from them. I thank you, Lord. Oh, God of restoration, I thank you. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you will continue to work in our hearts. There's some people here that are saying, God, from this day onwards, from this moment onwards, let me live my life according to what you want in my life. If that was your prayer, I know I could hear the prayer of some people here. If that was your prayer, God is saying, I'm starting again with you. I'm realigning your thoughts. I'm realigning your vision. I'm realigning your desires. I'm realigning you to the, my will for the destiny that I have before you to be fulfilled. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, great and mighty God, we just thank you. We are so privileged to come like this and to hear from you. There's nothing that we could do to deserve this privilege. It is only because of your grace. It's only because of your mercy and your love. So I thank you for what you are doing in our lives. And we thank you in faith for what you're going to do through our lives. As we pray for our nation, as we pray for our families, Father, I thank you. As you look out for bended knees, for people who are sincere and crying out for your families and your nation, you will see a breakthrough. He will use you to be a blessing. Father, we as a church, we come before you, Father, make us the instrument that you want us to be, the lighthouse that you want us to be the vessel that you want us to be so that we can reach out into this hurting world, this broken world, this desperate world with the hope of life which is Jesus. Help us to be the church once again. I thank you, Father. We have few months left in this year. These few months, Lord, we pray it will be the greatest move of God that we have seen in our lives and through our lives in these months even before we finish 2017 we thank you we believe it and we receive it in Jesus name we pray Amen, Amen, Amen <laughs> Hallelujah Oh my God Oh my God Nobody, nobody told me it's time up Okay, we don't have time for birthdays. Any birthdays, lift your hands. If there's any birthdays, happy birthday, Sancha. Happy birthday. Just, can we just wish them, clap for them already? I know we are like really, really late. Somebody should have just thrown some water or a shoe at me or something like that. You shouldn't let preachers preach like this. Praise God. Amen. Let's receive the blessing now unto him that is faithful. May his presence, his grace, his peace, his joy continuously rest upon you lead you and guide you and do great things in you and through you and may he and he alone receive all the glory the honor and the praise in Jesus name we pray Amen Do we have any wedding anniversaries? Any wedding anniversaries? Any wedding anniversaries? No? No, okay Remember for those people that you have not met for the last four months who put up their hands it's like, oh, four months? Ah Okay, I thought last week. Those people, please reach out, meet them, introduce yourself and may God constantly bless you. Amen. Have a blessed week. See you on Tuesday evening at 6.30.